Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different to my normal videos as this one's going to be a bit more of a long format uh, in-depth tutorial. This apart from you know how to paint um, you know can you do a video on different Space Marine chapter colors this one is probably the most requested tutorial which is leather. Um, so in this video I'm going to be painting the cape uh, from Abaddon. This is going to be like a really heavy, worn, textured leather. Um, however, I will go over in more detail as we get going and showing you uh, how we can tweak things. Uh, I will be showing you how I do mine most 99% uh, of the time. Um, and this will apply to, you know, like belt buckles and holsters and all that sort of good stuff. So um, throughout this, I'm going to be showing you the colors that I use. And then a little bit later on in the video, I'll be recommending some different colors and different ways that we can do it. Uh, so you can achieve different tones and looks. So the first tip um, I'm going to give you before we even get into any of the painting uh, when it comes to painting leather is references. So if you go online, just go on Google and type in leather or like leather texture, loads of different like colors and variations are going to show up on there and it's going to give you some really good inspiration on how to you know like color and like the worn effects and all that sort of good stuff uh, which will really help you you know decide and get some inspiration so the main colors uh, that we're going to use now i have obviously on this side you can see a little bit of like what we're aiming towards now this is not the end result's not going to look like this because when this is on the miniature this is in shadow so obviously that's why it's a little bit more duller uh, but we'll quickly go over the colors first of all um, also you can probably tell by this just to save a little bit of time um, it is primed in black and then I've just quickly gone over there and added a couple of thin coats of Rhinox Hide. So that is the first colour that we're going to be using. So I have gone for GW colours as these are probably going to be the most ones that people are going to have or use. Um, however, uh, there are a couple more colours in here that you can experiment with. And feel free to, you know, to you don't have to use these colours. It's all about experimentation with this. And it's what we do at the end that's really going to make this all pull together. Because there's quite a little bit of work involved at first. And then at the end, when we start applying our glazes, that's when everything comes together. Um, so obviously, like I said, as base coat is Rhinox Hide. Then we're going to use Mournfang Brown. And then this is where you can start to get a little bit experimenty, um, depending if you want like the more orangey levered look or a bit like desaturated. Um, we're going to start to play around with the XV88 and Baylor Brown. But also I do use other colors such as like you might, this sounds strange, but you might use a bit of flesh colors uh, like Cadian Flesh Tone or this one, uh, or any sort of like light flesh colours will also work as well as these, because like I said, it's that end glaze that's really going to transform the look of the leather. Now, some final little additions uh, to get your paints is, I do like to use a bit of an orange, because I like mine to be on the more browny orange side, uh, and any of these sort of paints will work as well. Now, obviously, in my videos, I don't always have a wet palette cam or a wet palette camera uh, just because I've only got one camera and and but for this I'm going to sort of leave it on camera a little bit so you can sort of see like the ratios and the dilutions that I'm going to be using for this um, now it, it might take a little bit more time it might seem like we're putting a lot of work in uh, in this tutorial this is just because it's a large cape but if you're doing something like uh, the gun holsters or like a where that you put like your ammo pouches and stuff then obviously it's going to be a lot quicker now the idea of this is, first of all, is to get as much texture as we can on this cape. Um, and then we're also going to be looking at different like light volumes and stuff. Now, obviously, because I might have turned my camera light on quite high, we can sort of see where the light is falling on this cape. And it's just a case of holding it under your lamp and seeing where it is. And that'll give you the reference points to where your highlights go. Uh, I will be changing the camera angles a little bit so you can get some different viewpoints and we'll be going into some close-ups and stuff um, but yeah so first thing is just apply a couple of thin coats all over of Rhinox hide and I've done that just to save some time um, I think I even airbrushed this on I'll be honest with you <laughs> just to uh, get that on there uh, ready for it but it's just a case of slopping your Rhinox hide all over it uh, but the main like tip 
I'm going to give you for this. When we're actually painting ours, especially these first few layers where we don't really need to concentrate on, you know, like making the marks, because we're going to be using a lot of mark making uh, for this, but, you know, you don't really need to, these first couple of layers, they don't really need to be, like, concentrated or be super neat. It's when we get to the higher ones where you can be a little bit more detailed and focused on where you're going to put them. So brushes, I've got a couple of brushes, especially for this first one. You can get away with using um, a large brush, uh, as long as it's got a good point on it. But I've also got, for this first layer, uh, this is a size 0 Artis Opus, or a 1, um, is... This one's a little bit old and knackered, and you'll probably see as we go through the tutorial, it starts opening up a little bit. Now this is great because it's going to add and create that little bit more texture. And again, that's what we're going for. So the first thing we need to do is get our <coughs> uh, Mormfang Brown. So the first thing we need to do is get a little bit of Mormfang Brown, and we're going to dilute that maybe 50 50 maybe or 60 40 with water and it's just a case of mixing that up and even when we come to the glazes at the end you know we're not going to be using like glaze mediums or anything like that um, we can just literally do it with water so again during this first stage it's just going to be really sloppy and really messy it will go on uh, a little bit lighter than usual and um, but obviously we all know as that paint starts to dry uh, it'll start to dull down a little bit and i'm literally it's just sketchy i'm not even like being neat at this point i'm just literally working my way around uh, and just building up like some pitting and texture uh, just just basically slopping and slashing all the paint on uh, now areas like where the shadow is going to be you can, I would recommend putting a slight little bit in there, but like I say, when we come to them end glazes, you know, if you feel like you've gone over it a little bit much, a little bit too much, obviously we can uh, hide that a little bit later on, uh, and once we, we can darken them up, um, you can, like, we're going to go back to his Rhinox hide and stuff, but you'll see when we get to those points, and I'll explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But you'll see a lot of people like Richard Gray, uh, a lot of those sort of like people that use these like scratchy uh, like effects. Um, Richard Gray is just an absolute beast and a, a master at doing that. But you can sort of see now, I mean, obviously they look quite thick at this point, uh, the lines. Uh, but we can, like I say, it's all going to dull down and we can refine them a little bit later on in the video. And um, what we are going to be doing as we start to go up, uh, with each colour and each tone is we're almost going to be overexposing it if 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 that makes sense so we're going to be taking it up a little bit brighter than what we want the end result to be um, because like I said when we add that glaze at the end it's going to be like a filter and it adds um, you know like a, it, change, it shifts that tone uh, and that colour um, towards what we want it to be and it, you know it really is that end glaze where it does pay off and it all comes together but like I say it is important to get these foundations down um, at first but definitely highly recommend get yourself on Google and <laughs> start looking at some uh, you know like reference photos just type in like old worn leather and you'll get tons of different like colors and stuff and again with these um, first couple of layers that we're adding on with these like little scratchy effects it's a good idea to do like multiple passes of it just to again build up any sections that you might have missed or any areas that uh, you know you want to add a little bit more texture again I'm going to keep mentioning it in this video but it all comes down to the texture that we put on there but as we go up the colors I'll show you and give you some hints and tips how we can refine that process a little bit more now as that's drying i'm going to move on to uh, an, a, another layer but this one i'm going to slow down a little bit and just concentrate on getting a couple more thinner lines to to help break that up uh, and with this second pass i'm going to be uh, leaving some of those shadow areas uh, a little bit more into the uh, in shadow so we're just going to avoid them a little bit so places like here uh, and here 
where the lights are going to be catching a little bit more. I'm just going to pay a little bit more attention to those uh, areas. And again, you will, for the first few parts of this video, that, you know, that sec, th these, you're going to start looking and think, oh, that's a bit overboard, that's a little bit too much, but honestly, it's not. And when we get to, I know I keep saying it, but we'll get to that end bit. That's where the uh, the magic starts to happen. And also this phase is really good uh, for mapping out your uh, highlight points. Uh, where, you know, like where your light's going to fall. And again, you can just scribble these on. Uh, and it's a really good way of doing that. And at some points, um, like here, I even like, I almost resort to like dry brushing in a way. Uh, like now I'm just literally like scribbling it on and again you get these little smaller uh, and thinner marks but I wouldn't recommend doing that as we start moving up uh, the, the layers. So when you've done those first few passes and layers you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now even this on its own would you know, stand out and make it look like it's uh, a really worn tattered cape um, but we're, yeah, we're going to start moving on to some more refined work. Now I am going to be switching over to a smaller brush, something like a, a, a size double zero. And this is just going to enable me to concentrate um, and get those lines a little bit thinner. Now when we're moving up to this section, one thing I'm going to say about leather is obviously wet leather tends to get a little bit more worn. Uh, and as those sort of like lines and cracks uh, in places where you know like the folds are going to be um, or places that are going to be moving quite a lot which on a cape's going to be sort of everywhere um, but we're going to be paying a lot of attention obviously to the highlight areas and also areas like these little holes and stuff uh, that we've got going on uh, and maybe towards the bottom and again a little bit later on you can darken these up to add a little bit of weathering towards the bottom. Now we're moving up to XV88 and again it's not a problem if you go over some areas that you might have already done with a flesh uh, again it's all about creating that uh, different variation. Now again, I'm going to go back to talking a little bit about colours and different colours that you can use. Now obviously the glazes that we had at the end is going to tie it all together, but you'll find, you know, like if you're using more like a, an orangey colour, uh, it will shift in a slightly different tone uh, and a different uh, like variation of that colour. Um, you know, you might just say, well, if you're going to go over it with a glaze, why don't you just paint it with like white or like, like a lighter colour all in one? again it'll only take you so far as in you know how much that can actually transform the uh, the color and i'm literally barely touching the um the, the miniature at this point with uh, my brush i'm just literally and as i as you'll notice as your paint starts to run out you can apply uh, a little bit more pressure onto it but these first few like layers up until literally up until we get to like the the glaze phase it is really gonna you know you might look at it and think oh i've done too much the the texture here is like it's not really going to look like leather up, right up until the end um, but it's about getting those you know first few layers and coats down that's really going to make it uh, transform put in the work to get a great result after as i always say but i always think you know, like when we're painting our miniatures, I know this one might seem like it's a lot of work, but especially if you're doing something like army painting and you've got like your space marines, you know, I always try and get people, you know, army painting is really good if you know if playing is just your thing, um, but if you're going to be playing with these miniatures on a you know, like a weekly basis or, you know, like going out every weekend and, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time and you've put a lot of time into these and, and money and stuff, so I always say like what's... What's it going to hurt spending, like, especially if you're doing like a gun pouch or something, is spending an extra 30, 20, 30 minutes on it just to make it really stand out. And then it's something you can be proud of on Battlefield. You're going to stand out to other players. Um, yeah, and overall, you know, it's something that you can be a little bit more prouder in your miniature work. And it's not it's not exactly like hard um, to do. It's just a case of that. The hardest thing you, you'll probably find is light placement. Um, and the brush control, like that, that's literally the you know the hardest part. And you know it's not like we're painting eyeballs or anything like that. But 
just doing these little tweaks here and there around his miniatures like what, what I teach in my videos it's not really classed as like high-end painting in my eyes it's just altering the way that we apply the paint like the texturing of them or something like that and especially when you're doing this like scratchy effect um, it does go on pretty quick you'd be surprised at how many of these you can um, do especially if you're doing gun pouches and stuff it would really you know make that huge difference um, and, you know if you keep I know obviously everything adds up to time you know like if you're doing armor and you're adding some chips and you're doing this everything does add up but you know if it, 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 it's spread out over a week if you're doing some army painting rather than trying to get them all painted in that one day it's an extra like say if you've got 10 space marines to do it's probably like an extra hour an hour and a half per night when uh, you're doing it just to get through like those 10 um and again you know you're going to get people actually looking at your miniatures and commenting on how good they look and um, so that's the uh, xv88 and i've sort of gone over all the where the highlights going to be and dragged a couple into the shadows and you can see now we've really started to get some texture on uh, on our cloak now we're going to be refining and paying special attention now to where like the cracks and stuff are going to be um, and if you know if you want to do a couple bit more on your highlights you can do that uh, but you've got to be uh, quite careful but again if you do make mistakes don't worry we can start to uh, knock it back a little bit later on in our glaze so like I said, now we're going to be starting to pay a little bit more attention to where those cracks and stuff would naturally be. Um, so we've got a tiny little hole down here at the bottom, which is where I'm going to start to add some more of that distressing um, to the to the leather. And again, as you can see, it's in my head I'm almost like lightning, not too jagged. It's more like smooth, smooth lightning that's like crisscrossing over each other. Don't be doing cross hatching. Because then you're going into territory of like different sort of fabrics, which I will do a tutorial on a little bit later in the future. Uh, and also coming up off the bottom of the cape, even though I'm going to muddy and dirty some of this up, uh, I'm also going to be adding a little bit of distressing to the uh, bottom and edges of the cape as well. And also areas where your highlights are, don't be afraid to go in there and add a couple more of these like highlighted areas because um, you know if it has got a few cracks and stuff in it if they're in the light they are going to stand out a little bit more than usual now to show you i am going to go a little bit crazy with this um, just to show you the different effects so i'm going to do some really bright like cracks on some side um, and also use a bit of this orange brown um, tile light orange uh, which is what i showed right at the beginning of the video is identical near enough to this colour um, just to show you the when we had our glaze at the end like the sort of shifts and the tones that we can get uh, throughout um, our, our, our leather painting now don't think you've got to go out and get all these colours I'm just doing this for the I'm just doing this for the purposes of this tutorial just to show you the different you know, like looks and stuff we can get so I'm going to use Rackarth Flesh um, which is a strange one for leather but it's just to prove a point and show you something there that happens a little bit later on towards the end. Again, all these are diluted exactly the same um, until we get to our glaze. Now, when you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, this is <laughs> this current moment is super heavily textured. The colors are slightly off from uh, where we want them to be. But now we're going to add some glazes and see where that magic takes us. Now, I'm going to be honest, glazing is not something I can probably justify and explain better than what other people can. Uh, however, if you want to learn more about glazing, there are tons of videos out there on uh, YouTube that explain glazes and look at different mediums and stuff like that. Um, that'll really go into depth if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, but essentially using a small amount of paint which is really watered down so we're going back to our morn fang brown because we want to shift everything a little bit more towards this color and it's something like four parts water to one part paint or even five parts water to one part paint 
it all depends on the thickness of your paint and you know like how old it is and stuff but you can sort of see the consistency that i've got on here and i'm going to wipe off a little bit on my, my finger that's a little bit too much um so i'm going to water it down a little bit more and again it is tempting with glazers to add more of uh, uh like paint to get it to where you want it to be but don't do that so the key and the best tip i can give you for it is obviously water it down you don't have to use like the glaze medium stuff it can help um but we'll literally i'll just use water uh, and, and paint and the key and the secret to it is letting those layers dry once we've put it on so now i've got some loaded up on my brush i'm just literally even that's a little bit too much i'm literally just gonna glaze it and you can sort of see it's not really altering much but it's starting to shift those colors into more of a brown that will dull down a little bit once it starts to dry that's just because we've got uh, water on there that's making it uh, a little bit brighter than usual but you can see instantly already the color from there to there um, what that glaze actually does and sometimes it's a good idea to what i tend to do sometimes is mix it up in a well palette um, so you've got like a little puddle of paint that you can start to dip in but it is getting those ratios uh, but you'll find it if you know if you want to experiment on some pieces uh, beforehand if you're not too confident in glazing like i am by no means a master at glazing i'm one of i'm like an old cowboy builder i'm sort of mix it till it looks right when it's like concrete but you know i always have this theory when it comes to like painting you know people say oh you've got to do it this step that step and do it this way and that way i don't i i sort of buy more into the theory of you know by it's like a theory i called a lot of people don't have magic it's called by any means necessary so when i'm doing magic if i want to get you to like a certain card or wherever i need you to be i will literally do that by any means necessary so i've got so many different tools and ways and techniques in my repertoire to be able to get where i need you to be it's the sort of same when it comes to painting so you know if i need to add a glaze or then add some more yeah it might not always be the right way but you know if that end result's the the same then you know that's a it's a bonus like especially when i do like a lot of my high-end painting i might you know do a bit of airbrushing then go to my brush then go back to airbrushing uh, and then use oils enamels and go back to you know i just i switch and swap and i use all these different tools yeah there's a lot more easier ways but if that works for you then that works for you and if you know sometimes you find something online that helps alleviate some of them processes then that's that's perfect you know it's what i try and do in some of my videos especially when it like comes to army painting and stuff it it really you know hopefully i can help you chop out some of those stages and you're not going out and messing about but in a way that's how i learned to glaze it was just experimenting and messing about by any means necessary to achieve the colors that i wanted to to achieve so i'm going to wait for that first layer to dry and you can see it's completely shifted now uh, in its tone and its variation of colors and what's nice because we've obviously i did over exaggerate some by using some of the rakar flesh and stuff but you can sort of see how that distressing on the cape um is starting now to show out and it will be a little bit glossy at first until it starts to dry and sometimes i've noticed with glazing you do get a bit of a satin but there's nothing you know you can add like satin or you know, matte varnishes if if that's your thing to uh to to complete it and make it look as it is now in a way i'm so happy with just that one glaze layer of where some of it is however because leather is it does have quite a lot of variation you might want to glaze uh, some more just to get a make it a little bit more saturated um which are, you know it all just adds to that variation um now when you obviously you know i'm sort of keeping away from the shadow so let's say if i wanted to glaze this section again what i'm going to do is rather than come down into the shadow i'm going to go up so i always want to be pushing it towards the highlight so if it's towards the highlight you push up towards the highlight or down towards the highlight and then if it's the shadow i'd be going the opposite way 
and that's just a little tip just so you're not starting to push pigment and paint into the shadow areas uh, and we will be glazing into some of those shadows as well especially if we want to knock back some of that um, paint even more which will which we are going to do so i'm sort of happy there where you know, like the brightness and the tone of some of the highlight areas but now we're going to go back to our original color uh, that we used very first which is rhinox hide and we're going to do the exact same thing but pay more attention to the shadowy areas like there's a little bit here that i want to be a little bit darker now my rhinox hide i've noticed with rhinox hide it tends to dry up pretty quick um I, I love especially for like these scratchy effects and stuff because i do do a lot of my miniatures in that i love air paints um so I think next time I get right outside, I'm going to try and pick it up in the air paint style. Like uh, I recently got Mephiston Red for like when I'm painting red guns or cloaks and stuff. And it's already like pre-thinned and it's just really nice um, without having to water it down and stuff all the time. Let's add a little bit more water. And now we're going to start to push it into the shadow. So as I was explaining in this area, we're just going to glaze into the shadows working downwards so that most of the pigment is pushed down to the bottom and we're only glazing um, those shadow areas um, because if I pushed it up you'd have like a dark patch there and then it'd be a bit lighter there which is not what we not what we want so because the shadow on this bit is more at the top if I come down that's going to make this bit a little bit more in the shadow area so we're going to glaze up <clears throat> and then as you get down towards the bottom you might have some little patchy areas that want to be a little bit darker this section here we're going to push down into it and up so it's like down and up obviously only used a little bit of it um we only needed to put like a couple of glazes on this is all still drying you'll see because it's got that like sort of glossy sheen to it um but again we can you know apply multiple passes like areas like this i probably want this to be a little bit more in shadow and now i am going to come downwards for this one and what that's going to do it's going to start a, a dull what we've done uh, the work that we've already done down in case you want to knock it back a little bit because like I said we can at the beginning of this video we can knock it back or move forward if you want to add some more it's again it's all about going back and forth and I know a lot of uh, people even like Richard Gray speaks about this a lot is you know people are, and it's I think it's because Games Workshop do teach in that style like you know stage one base coat stage two wash stage three highlight stage four final highlight but when you start to paint, you know, like a bit more high-end stuff, you, you realise that sort of stuff goes out of the window. It don't really matter. You know, you, you, we do pay attention to those little areas and you might paint certain areas like that, but there's nothing stopping you like this, especially when you like painting stuff like this and skin. Going back and forth, it really, really doesn't matter. Um, when it comes to this, again, going back to the, the old <laughs> by any means necessary theory. <laughs> So it's starting to look now a little bit more where we uh, originally wanted it. Um, but again, some areas are still a little bit too bright. And what we're going to do finally, you can either mix this with your brown or you can uh, just literally use the black i am gonna uh, mix this in with our brown that we've already got i don't want it to be fully black i just want it to be a bit of a darker rhinox hide so i'm just going to use the little glaze that we already had on the palette and mix in some black with that now i did say i wanted to talk about how we can get different tones people like like the cooler tones uh, or even a, a warm this is more on like the warm side However, if you wanted a bit more of like a cool tone, you might actually skip like the Rhinox Hide. You might even go in there and glaze a little bit of like a really dark blue 
Um, and again, this is all experimentation. You could even do red in there. And you don't always have to glaze with the um, normal standard paints. If you want to glaze with contrast paints, they're just as good at shifting the tone. Like, especially if I were doing this one, um, a, a, a contrast paint that would be really good for it would be Garagax Sewer. Um, that one would be really good, but again, you'd have to water it down maybe with a bit of the special contrast medium. Um, and you can even do it with, with that as well. Now, at this point, if you do want to get a little bit more creative and, you know, weather this even further, you could go down the route of, like, oils um, and enamels. I'd probably be tempted to use a little bit of oils with these because sometimes, you know, you get different tones and stuff on them. Um, but that little weathering stage is entirely up to you. But if I were going to be doing, like, a cape, I'd be, you know, tempted to do some splashes and splodges. I've always been walking through, like, mud and puddles and stuff. But again, this comes down to the miniature that you're painting and the environment that that is in so guys that has been my tutorial on leather i hope it's been a bit of an eye opener um you know if you want to spend more time on these and practice you know i'm sure we all get spares in his kit like you might have a couple of cloaks laying about or you know prime up a couple of different uh, gun holsters or pouches uh, and get practicing on a few different one of those so i hope you've enjoyed it guys it really helped me out massively if you could like this video share it all that sort of good stuff and if you want to check out some of my more videos then please consider becoming a subscriber so thanks guys and i shall catch you in my next video video.